Welcome, I'll be reacting to Sapphire and Steel, Story 2, Episode 2. Looks like we're getting the usual confusion of, depending on where you're watching or where they were released, you have different season slash series numbers. So I'm going to switch over and just call them Story 1, Story 2, Story 3. Selected clips are given for commentary purposes. This is not a market substitute. Please support the original. And no spoilers in the comments. It's very hot. And very, very still. It's their special send-off. Send-off. Could be Boar Wars, based on what she's dressed like. Or Great War, and she just can't afford new clothes, and she's like 15 years behind the fashion. That can happen, especially if you're out in the country. I love looking at old photographs because... You know, there's the fashion plate of what you're supposed to look like, and then there's reality. So you get people that are like in Edwardian outfits, but their jewelry is 1920s and their hair is 1920s because they couldn't afford the full outfit, but they could afford accessories and blinging up a little bit to be more in fashion. The station is closed to ordinary passengers. Ah. Just the girls who gave. Flowers. Uh. Well, the door's open. Ah, oh, don't cut it there. Not ads. I actually kind of like that I'm watching this on a platform with ads because it's, I think, closer to the original experience. Great War, Great War, yeah. Ah! Uh... Oh, look at the tension to detail! Well, I mean, obviously he would have had a lot of trauma. It is without life. An external projection? No, an after image. After image? Yes, it lived once. Oh. So a traditional ghost. What do you want here? I reckon you might as well find that out more. I mean, it could be very simple, just anger that people sent him off to go through that just absolute Tartarus. I mean, is that really your idea of evil? Yes, it is. Well, it isn't mine. Tolly does have a point here. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Tolly, please be careful. Yes, that's a spirit. I'm worried something's going to happen to him. Because he's coming at this out of a place of empathy, and that can be very vulnerable. It was something he wanted me to experience, to participate in. He resented what they stood for. You sensed that? Yes. His death started here. Mm -hmm. Civil wars, holy wars. You know, sometimes I wonder why they bother to send us here. Yeah. And you obviously have a leaning towards clairvoyance also. Must have taken years of practice. Now, my approach to the supernatural Mr. is a much more... <laughs> yes? Do you have any more tapes for this machine? You refer to my equipment as junk. It's still junk. Give them to me. <laughs> Steal. <laughs> Your bedside manner. You're trying to tell me that this force thrives upon feelings, upon some of the worst human feelings? Yes. Oh of living people? No. Preferably the dead. Oh! <laughs> oh my. She says so casually, too. Preferably the dead. Uh-oh. We got more. Or one of them is not real. Meaning not formerly alive. Oh no, he left his cross behind. So where does this force come from? What are they doing? Radio. The air. Not enough air. Whoa. It sounds like death again, someone's death. Yes. Yes. But different. But where were they? In the submarine. Yeah. Our young soldier was obviously from the First World War, and that seemed sort of... World War II. 
sort of later. Why later? Is it where in the building you are, what time period it is? Like the higher up the steps you go, the later? I don't know. No, but she was upstairs when she turned 1890s. What's the temperature? Cold. The submarine. It's odd. I've never recorded a temperature drop there. Always the opposite. What? What? It's like high in the air. The air is thin. It's a high altitude. Oh. But it's still dark. Oh, the aviator. I'd rather not have to think the obvious. That this could be a recruiting ground for the dead. Yes. Yeah. The numbers are back. The recruiting ground is starting to look a little bit more like what's happening. <gasps> oh my. <gasps> In this case, I think they're trying to scare him. Sapphire was different. Ah! Well, that was intense. I think my takeaway is that the soldier was recruited first by the time beings, and he is rightfully really upset about what happened in World War I. I don't know if you have seen Peter Jackson's They Shall Not Grow Old. It is amazing. I saw it on the big screen. They took a bunch of footage from the time period and colorized it so it feels real. Like sometimes when you watch black and white, it's like, oh, I'm watching a film. But here it was just like you were there. It was a lot. Very different experience to say watching a Great War fictionalized film where you know that they're actors. In this one, when you saw stuff, it was real. And so when we got that kind of flashback with Sapphire, it really reminded me of my experience sitting there and watching that film. And in her case, of course, she also felt all the emotions that came along. But I could see this, not exactly a ghost, but a reactivated impression left behind by a human emotion caused by a soul? It's a bit long. He could seek out others to activate, especially at a charged area like a train station where you get so many people often in emotional states. I'm wondering if that group that we saw are people he recruited. Or, of course, there's the theory that it's all a sham, it's just him, and the rest is distraction, red herrings. Don't tell me. I want to see if I can figure it out.